Hi, welcome into my studio. This is a reference photo for the next pastel project I've got lined up. And in the past, lots of people have asked me, how do I pick the colored paper, the pastel matte paper color that I'll be using for each project? So I thought I'd just go into a, a bit of depth on this one to show you the paper type that I'll probably use. I say probably because I may change my mind at the last moment. But at least you'll see my thought process. Okay, so for anybody that have seen my other videos, whether I've been doing oil painting or pastel drawings, whichever, you know my preference is to go for a mid-toned paper or to tone my canvas if I'm painting. The reason behind that primarily is by using a mid-tone, I can then easily judge and apply my lighter tones to it and they will show up and my darker tones to it and they will show up the mid-tone um, is what's doing that effect if you think if I'd use white paper and then I was putting highlights on this or light white highlight it wouldn't show up on white paper if I was using black paper and I was putting perhaps the darks that around the the neck they wouldn't show up either so mid-tone solves that problem so that's why I use a mid-tone paper or t canvas um, for that purpose only. So the next question is, what color do I use? Okay, so what I've done here, I've cut the blue background out uh, from around the, the Harris Hawk. That shows me pretty much white paper. So if I was using white paper, this is um, the type of thing I would have around it. And you can see that when I do that, it's very, very stark. Like I said, the highlights wouldn't show up very well on it. So I discount that straight away. Okay, so so that's white. So if I look at the next color, is barely any change because that's pastel matte light gray. So pastel matte light gray paper, there you go. It's, it's pretty much white. So that's another one I very rarely use. Now the only time I would really use that is when I want to to draw a subject that's extremely vibrant. So it could be very light colored flowers or that kind of thing. So that's the only time I do that because paper tone, so the darkness of it, and a little bit of the color as well will influence to a very, well, a small degree usually what goes on top. And I'll show you that a little bit later on. So when I was thinking of this drawing, there was a couple of possibilities and obviously I had some I asked on Patreon as well my art channel what color papers people would be inclined to use for this subject some said the sand colored paper so that's close to the pastel matte sand colored paper and I think that would work the sand colored paper has got a little bit of a tinge of uh, towards the green really so when you put in blue down you can get a bit of a tinge of a blue green if you've not gone very opaque so i possibly not use that in this instance other members said what about the blue so the pastel map blue is really quite dark it would work um, the browns of the bird would layer on top the sky is quite light a dark color like this means that you'd have to put a couple of layers on to try and get that sky uh, a nice light blue. I would probably not go for that. The subject is nice and warm and the blue is cool. So unless we get a good coverage, some of that will show through, possibly mute the color of the bird. At least that's my way of thinking at the moment with it. But remember, because pastel is usually you know, really um, opaque, it covers most things. Next up, and this is what I was thinking, was poss possibly the sienna color. Now, a lot of the bird has got a real warmth to the feathers, and you can see instantly the difference between that blue and the sienna. A lot of these lower feathers on the uh, wing, the upper part of the wing, that's almost that color already. A lot of the colors around the neck as well are almost that color. And I think the blue would 
cover fairly well because that sienna is not a particularly dark paper so that's a possibility another one would be the gray so the pastel matte dark gray that's a paper i use very very often because with wildlife it's quite often that the, the subject is um, subdued or grayed out or it's not all that often that they really punchy colors at least when you're doing fur and most feathers that i do um so i go to that gray quite often it covers well the blue would cover quite easily on there as well so there's another possible that i would be thinking of the final one i would be thinking of which is another one of my favorites would be the brown and you can see instantly that i turn that color on we can see there's lots of that color already in the birds head uh, the the upper part of the wing as well as not too far from it so i'm thinking if i use this brown then just by putting in some of the highlights and some of the darks already the bird's head will pretty much look like i've already drawn it there's not going to be a substantial amount of layering to try to cover that color so my two favorites would probably be the sienna and the brown if not those it would be the gray as i said the sand would probably work as well but i'm not sure with that blue so there's no real hard and fast rules as to the um, color but that's my thought process for this one i would probably go with that brown so what about the way color of the paper influences the actual color that's going on top well this subject i'm concerned about the blue more than anything because i know if i use one of those mid-tone colors the brown the sienna even the gray the browns of the bird are going to really be able to cover that color or those colors very easily because they're kind of near to the same tone the name same lightness and darkness my concern as i mentioned would be the blue getting that to actually cover the paper sufficiently so that I can get this natural looking blue. So, you know, do yourself some experiments as well. It's, you don't want to be finding things out like you've drawn the bird and perhaps you spent 20 hours doing the bird and it's perfect and you're going to put that blue sky in last and all of a sudden you find, oh, I wish I'd picked a different color paper because this is influencing the blue a lot and I can't get the blue that I want. So. I'm all for doing experiments first so that I don't get uh, surprises later on. So what I've done, I've taken the light gray paper, the dark gray paper, the brown buttermilk, I think that's what it's called actually, I'm pretty sure it is, the buttermilk, and finally the sienna. And I've just got some off cuts of each one. On the top of the screen, you can see that I've wrote pan pastel. So all those blues on the top have been applied with one of those finger sized sponges with pan pastel. And I've tried to get the color as um, accurate as possible. So they're the same color. The next one then I've used the same color stick. So it's not the same color as the pan pastel. It's a stick that I've got that's quite similar. So I've used that same stick on all of those offcuts of um, pastel mat. And then I've used pastel pencil because that's not as opaque as the stick. So it's more likely to show up the color of the paper through it, be influenced by the color of the paper. Now also, you can look at this and the way you're looking at the colors, they can be influenced. For instance, if we look at the light gray paper, that can make the blues look darker than they really are. If we look at the dark gray paper next to it, I can make the blues look lighter than they really are in comparison. So what I've done, I've just used Photoshop to mask out those areas so we can really see what's going on. Now with the pan pastels, you can see coverage is pretty much the same other than with that buttermilk and it does look lighter. The brown is making that sky look a bit darker, but the rest pretty much the same now the sticks are a bit more opaque than the um, pan pastel so i think 
personally that they look more even across the board there. The buttermilk once again is definitely the lighter one and that's showing through and then at the bottom pencil you can really see how that buttermilk is showing through again and the sienna is starting to show through as well. So these are things to keep in mind. So let's say for instance we're doing a, a large flower that's a very vibrant yellow color it probably makes sense to go with that buttermilk because it's easier to tone down a color than it is to try and bring it up so I would want that paper shining through to give that vibrancy another one that I would use for these bright subjects as I said earlier on would be the light gray so that would not influence the color because it's basically white but it would allow us to overlay light colors let the light shine through it of the paper again so with this particular subject the dark gray would work the brown would work and the sienna it'd really be any of those three i wouldn't want to go with the buttermilk because of that you can see that bit of a green showing through where the yellow of the paper is mixing optically with the blue so those are the ones i would particularly um, go with so you can see that paper color if it's extreme colors of paper it will influence some of the colors that's going on top but if it's neutral like the grays browns and the siennas doesn't influence that much unless you're only applying uh, thin coatings of pastel on the surface and deliberately allowing that to show through so that's just a brief kind of overview of things perhaps you should be or could be thinking about when you're selecting your papers things to keep in mind and I'll see you all again on the video where hopefully you'll see me drawing this Harris Hawk. If you're looking for even more great art sources I've really got you covered first off I've got a Patreon channel it's been going well over a year or so packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month lots of the videos are uh, many hours long so you can see they're really really in-depth subjects such as um, turtles birds elephants big cats you name it is on there so that's my patreon channel and also on that patreon channel before i go into something else i've got a secret facebook group so only the members are actually on there it's the most supportive and friendly facebook group that i've ever seen i know i'm biased but it really is We've got uh, four or five hundred members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also, you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very, very difficult to navigate around, we've got this free website that comes with it. All the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever so hope you like those extra resources and i'll see you all again real soon